Hi, Jacob Kalusner here and welcome to Instant Threat Modeling of delegating identity verification to telecoms or simply SMS-based two-factor authentication. All right, SMS-based two-factor authentication, what's the problem? Better SMS-based 2FA than no 2FA at all, but let me tell you a story. More than 10 years ago, banks and other service providers realized that credentials theft and password brute force is a thing. Two-factor authentication was designed to mitigate some of those risks. High-value corporate banking chose physical devices, such as RSA tokens displaying random six digits codes every 30 seconds. Bigger email providers, retail banks and services that suffered credentials theft as well required a different solution, much easier to deploy. And here comes the SMS text messages. Extremely easy to implement. All you needed was an SMS gateway. It sends a random code to the client's phone number, the client rewrites the SMS to the interface, and technically delegating the authentication to the telecom provider, you authenticated your client. Who are the potential attackers? When considering threats to 2FA, which is a last resort mechanism to protect against phishing and compromised workstation, you should practically assume that the attacker already knows the password. The other threat actor is somebody who compromised the user's mailbox uh, because it usually allows to reset the password. And the third threat actor is somebody whose only knowledge is the user ID or email address. What can go wrong? The question of what can go wrong when it comes to 2FA um, usually has one answer, bypassing the 2FA requirement, either by making the provider not ask about the 2FA code at all, uh, getting access to the code itself, or simply becoming the phone owner, so receiving the SMS code. How technically this could happen? As always, we have some standard components. The API gateway and the SMS gateway, they have an attack surface for um, any kind of technical vulnerabilities such as remote code execution uh, or business logic flaw. A common attack vector when it comes to uh, SMS to FA is brute force. If you can send the response code to the API multiple times for the same SMS, then after a half a million requests, you will have 50% 50, 50 chance of uh, hitting the right one. Don't worry if the code changes. If the code changes every time you make an attempt and the new SMS is sent to the uh, victim's phone, uh, then don't worry, it's not a lottery. Uh, do the maths, um, you will need around 700,000 requests uh, to have 50% chance of hitting the right one. Intercepting SMS codes is possible. There are multiple vulnerabilities, multiple attack vectors, um, ones that include downgrading the protocol being used by the phone or simply uh, a man-in-the-middle attack um, on the protocol used by the phone. So we've got a man in the middle here. Now the best threat is here. No matter how effective the detection mechanisms um, are on the server provider side or how secure is the server API, the attacker reaches out to the telco provider of the uh, victim's phone number and the attacker says, hey, I am John Doe, I just lost my phone and I need a new SIM card. Even more trickier is the phone number porting threat. The attacker visits another telecom um, and says, um, hey, I am John Doe um, and I was with that other telco provider, but I want to switch to yours. Uh, please port my old number. And the last threat here, SMS redirection. So some telecoms, they allow, for example, in their web interface to set up a redirection for all incoming messages uh, to be forwarded to another phone number. Instant mitigations. Base threat model for the APIs. Enforce new protocols, either on your own phone or as a telecom for all users. Also, any 2FA device change. Uh, such as phone number change, should require 2FA authentication from the old device. For SIM swapping and phone number porting threats, uh, there are two kinds of mitigations. For the service providers, uh, just switch to mobile app uh, 2FA authentication. 
The second one is for telecoms. Sim swapping and SIM card duplicates uh, should require physical access to the telecoms branch and um, identity verification. Any key change to the phone account, such as SMS redirection, um, can be delayed in time. Immediate notifications to the old SIM and email address should be sent. Phone number porting and eSIM generation should require confirming the access to the old SIM. Also, a 24 or 48 hours delay um, should help a bit. To sum up, it is possible to stop SIM swapping threats, but it requires cooperation from all telecoms. Still, SMS-based two-factor authentication is better than no 2FA at all. This was Instant Threat Modeling. Always happy to discuss your case. Thanks.